want to say uh, this committee is going to make FAA reauthorization a very big priority. So today, I guess, is a kind of a kickoff, if you will, not intended thus, but uh, you, many of the witnesses have brought up several issues that will, I think, attract more attention from us in our discussion period uh, about this. And we are having a NOTAM hearing with the FAA, I think, next week. So we will continue the operational issues into the future, for sure. Um, but I wanted to start with that, because I think the issue of operational control is very important. Mr. Watterson, you now plan to upgrade your uh, system. I and mean, one of the things about Southwest, again, is that point-to-point -point service that had more of a problem dealing with the weather event as opposed to a hub model. When are you going to complete that upgrade? Uh, thank you, Senator. Uh, the upgrade to the cruise system I talked about? The dispatch, the flight dispatch system. Um, so, um, Please correct me if I'm, I'm not getting your question correct, but uh, we are um, uh, spending $1.3 billion in, in technology this year, which is about 25% more than 2019. Um, and uh, that was, again, 9% more than, than 2018. So we're, we're moving our spending up faster than our revenue and our size, and we're upgrading a number of systems with that. With regards to this event, our crew scheduling software had a particular uh, fault. It didn't stop working, but uh, we lost, uh, it fell down, so to speak, and overwhelmed. And there's a specific- I, I don't think on my I constituents' apologize. point, I don't think they care about what, whether it was, didn't go to full capacity, had a glitch. They want to know if you're going to fix that system and when. Uh, yes, uh, yes, Senator. Uh, uh, tomorrow, uh, the reflex will go in and it'll be live in our production system. It's already had two rounds in our test system. So that the same event, if it happened in a week, we would have a different outcome. That technology would not stop functioning. As I mentioned in my testimony, we believe our winter operations resiliency was the root cause, and that'll take longer to address. And so we will focus on that for the bulk of our time. Okay. You're here today, and I very much appreciate it. Yes, Your CEO didn't want to show up. <clears throat> now, we could have figured out a way to get him here, but you're the operations guy. And I thought, you know what? I really want to talk to him. So I really want to understand, because I have a lot of pilots here, and they're telling me that they've been telling you about this for a long, long time. And so what I want to know, because a lot of people suffered a lot because of this, juxtaposed to other airlines and where they were, and you just paid out a huge dividend. So people want to know, are these guys going to invest in the technology that will make this system operational so this will never happen again? Thank you, Senator. We need to invest in technology, but also in our uh, operational systems outside of technology uh, because the winter operations uh, were too much for us. You're correct that other airlines uh, were able to handle the winter weather and we were not. And so to be able to uh, better handle the winter weather, we need more infrastructure at airports for de-icing. We need more de-icing trucks. We need new technology systems with de-icing. We need to weatherize our ground support equipment. So there's lots of work and lots of expenditures we expect to prevent this from happening again. And that will be the bulk of the effort. And so what is the cost of that upgrade that you need to do, and when will it be completed? Uh, we're undergoing the assessment right now. We are doing a top-to-bottom view of our winter operations, and uh, the undoubtedly be in the millions and millions of dollars, but it won't be until probably in, in March we'll have finished the assessment of exactly how much and where. We already know in Denver and Midway we need substantial upgrades, and we're already uh, pursuing that with the airports. Do you understand the public's frustration with this? Do you understand that they want to know, and we're going to get into a lot of technology issues, trust me, um, but I think they want to know that you're going, your brand, yes, has been built. And uh, I definitely think Herb Kelleher would be here if he was the CEO. He would have been here today because that's, that's Herb. I actually sat with him on the Roatan Commission, so got to know a lot about his views on aviation. I think Mr. Murray, Captain Murray, is going to say that you lost operational control. And that is the FAA's oversight to make sure that you have operational control. So if you don't make the technology investment to keep up that operational control, then yes, we should say something about that. Now, Captain Murray, did Southwest Airlines lose operational control in the aftermath of the weather event? Uh, my answer is yes. I, I think the written testimony uh, provides a lot of data and, 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 and tells the story of how it did. 
uh, Mr. Watterson's own written testimony, uh, fourth paragraph under why did this happen, he actually says, we could not execute the plan we had established for operating during the storm. And, and I believe that answers your question as well. What do you think it takes to get this system changed and upgraded so that if we have another massive weather event, that the point-to-point -point system that is unique to Southwest doesn't have the same kind of uh, delays and outages? Well, I, I think it's gonna take a much more holistic approach to, to operating our network. Um, we love our network. We think it's, it's the magic behind Southwest. That's not our issue. Our issue is, is when there is a disruption, then Southwest, it takes Southwest much longer to recover. And it's more for us, it's a process and how they program that IT and how they connect pilots to airplanes and flight attendants, um, which is what causes the, the ongoing execution problems. So that is something that can be done relatively quickly. They have to change any pilot who is here, and, and, and these pilots have come here on their day off, uh, can attest to the chaos that um, they go through when going to work. They don't know where they're gonna go. They don't know where they're gonna overnight. They don't know how long they're gonna be on duty, and they don't know how long their overnight's gonna be. I'm, so it's holistic. Thanks, uh, my time has expired, but I will point out Ms. Pinkerton's point about the overstaffing and scheduling. We're gonna see when we look at this whole system and we have the, all the airlines, we're gonna find out that the people who overstaffed had enough people to survive this the best. And the Southwest ended up on the other end because of this technology and the point-to-point -point system. But anyway, Senator Cruz. 